Okay, hi there. So, we are going to proceed uh, to the next part in Chapter 6. Uh, previously, we have discussed 3.1, 0.2, 3 and now we need to proceed to the next one which is the electronic charge and follow-up record. So, previously, we have learned about the manual charge and follow-up record. So, how you are going to follow by using the electronic charge? Okay. So, the computer has changed performance procedures for many of its tasks. So, by using the computer keyboard or a barcode scanner, information normally recorded on requisition can be keyed or scanned into the computer instead. Okay? So, uh, in order for you to use the computer for charge out and follow up system, you need to use a computer software that can identify and track any records uh, for creation or receipt to transfer to inactive storage or disruption. So, these computer programs actually will track unlimited numbers of records and a procedure, a variety of useful report. Uh, rep such as file inventories, file activity, records retention periods, and records destruction dates. Okay, so uh, in other words, when you are using uh, your student ID number, okay, uh, you give your student number, you can retrieve a lot of document uh, records. For example, your fee records, your result or your academic records, and your college record. Okay. So this is what we call the what we call the uh, tracking by using the electronic. Okay, so now we need to proceed uh, proceed to this one. This is important using barcode charge out and follow up system. Okay, actually uh, for the using barcode charge out, it is fast and accurate means of gathering and transmitting data to a computer. Okay. When we are talking about a barcode, uh, I want you to recap. When you go to the mall, uh, either Mardin, uh, Tesco, or any mall, okay, Eon Mall, for example, when uh, they scan, they are scanning the barcode, right? When they are scanning the barcode, actually, this each of this barcode represent all the information about that product, right? Uh, how uh, how many product left? what type of the product, okay, and the price of each product, okay. So, this is what we call uh, barcode. But now, we are going to take a look on the perspective of a records management, okay. So, this is what we call, uh, we have a term of file tracking, which is a method of knowing where charge out records are and when you need them. Okay, in other words, we can know by using the charge out barcode, we can know who are holding the document that we want to borrow, uh, and then we also have all the information about that document. Okay, so there are four components of the barcode that you need to know. The first one is the barcodes itself, the second one is the barcode scanners, and next one is recharger or downloader. And lastly, is the personal computer and software. Okay, let's take a look on this one, one by one, the components of the barcode. Okay, the first one, each barcode is unique but does not contain any specific information. Yes, you have the barcode but this barcode is unique. It's not the, uh, the same with the other uh, product or other record or other document. Okay, but does not contain any specific. So, identifying information you need to each record must be entered into the computer. So, you are the one need to what we call... Uh, put the information about that record or that file that file okay then the record is assigned to a particular pre-printed barcode label to be affixed to the record okay this is the barcode first okay the first method uh, the first component the second component oh okay so another information it can be prepared uh, by computer using available barcode labeler program standalone standalone or portable barcode label printer okay you can print out that barcode next one is the barcode scanner okay after you have key in the information on that barcode okay for example uh, the, the, uh, the barcode is for uh, folder uh, marketing okay and then what are the documents inside the marketing we uh, key in all the information about that one okay so the barcode scanner is the readers are uh, the barcode data collection so you need to use the barcode scanner to read 
or to uh, uh, to what we call interpret the information on that barcode so it uh, it is portable handheld or battery powered the barcode scanner passes over the barcodes okay so it can storing up to 300 scans before downloading into the computer and recharging if necessary okay so this is the barcode scan, uh, scanner so you are familiar with this one especially uh, you are going to the mall any mall my Dane, giant tesco and etc okay you are going to see this one okay uh, you also see this one in the library okay the library they are using the barcode scanner uh, so in other words they are using the electronic charge out and follow up okay especially they know when you do not return the book you're supposed to return last week but you do not return yet okay they can know because all the information is in the system next one number three the third uh, component is, is recharger downloader so this one is transfer when you scan they read the document and then when you have the recharger that one is transfer okay uh, transfer the data from portable handheld scanner to the computer so when the scanner is connected to the recharger or downloader okay so the computer and the power batteries in the scanner are recharged okay this is the third components last component yes you need to have the personal computer and software if you do not have the computer so a personal computer or software how you can read the information about the uh, scan information okay so convert the scan data into useful information when the scanner data are downloaded to the computer a variety of useful information may be computer generated okay so this uh, before this you have the file tracking now you have another term which is file tracker so file tracker actually display who has the record how long the record has been charged out and when the record is due back okay so you also have another information such as how often a file is used when a file was last used when a file should be destroyed and also how many files exist uh, for a, a, particular, a particular person or a company okay so we have completed the four components of barcode so the barcode is in the topic of a uh, subtopic of the electronic charge out and follow up okay so now we proceed to the 6.4 is records transfer uh, in chapter Two, we have learned a little bit about the records transfer so now you need to know uh, the definition of record transfer which is the act of changing the physical custody of records with or without change of legal title so the definition in chapter 6 is quite different with chapter 2 but again uh, when the question uh, be asked for you this one either one you answer the answer will be it is still correct okay so the records are moved from one storage area to another records are transferred when they are no longer used frequently so all the records are less frequently assessed and become inactive so there are two types of records transfer you need to know the first one is perpetual uh, record transfer and the second one is periodic okay so the perpetual records are continually transferred from active to inactive storage areas and the periodic, periodic records transfer is active records are transferred at the end of a stated period of time to inactive storage at the end of their fiscal year okay so in the period you have another term which is one period one period means records are transferred in the end of one period of times either six times uh, a year or once a year okay and then you need to know the transfer procedures there are five procedures for you to transfer the record the first one is you determine when records are to be transferred the second one when you uh, you know when you need to know what records are to be transferred next one number three you need to be pre you need to prepare the records that are going to be transferred and then you need to arrange the transfer of the record itself and lastly is you receiving the records in the storage area so this is uh the first steps are for you to transfer a procedure a trans to transfer the records and then you need to know 
what are the supplies and equipment will uh, that you can use for you to transfer the records okay you have the transfer boxes and labels you have the guts and folder and you also have the equipment okay so the transfer boxes and labels usually you have lift off and lift up tops okay removable tops allow quick access for filing and retrieval records this one is box you can see this one in HEA or GP you can see that's a lot of boxes and with labeling okay so the box are provided with labels on the end yes you have the labeling so that you know what are the documents or file in that box and then contents allocation information are marked directly on the box Next one is guide and folder. You have learned about guides and folder in chapter 4, in the end of chapter 4. So, guides used in active file are not transferred into active storage with the transferred record. So, plastic folder stays, uh, stay in active file and more, as, uh, and more expensive than Manila folder. Okay, so organization that transfer large volume of record often transfer hanging folder along the record. Okay, usually uh, when you use the plastic, they maintain the plastic and just remove the documents or the uh, file or the file in the uh, that folder. Okay, why? Because it's quite costly. Okay, uh, I'm going to take my picture here. Okay, this is uh, the equipment that we can use uh, to transfer uh, uh, supply the uh, to transfer the record. Okay. This is quite familiar, this one, because when you have uh, the uh, top of the what we call storage, you can use this one, okay? The same thing goes to this one. So, in active storage record center, use less expensive storage equipment, usually still shelving, yes, okay? The shelving may be reached to the ceiling as in the warehouse. That's why we need to use this one and also this one. Okay, to get to the higher uh, level of the, uh, what we call the shelf. Okay, so rolling ladders or motorized lift may be used to raise record to the store and retrieve boxes. Okay, next one. Last but not least is the record center. So you have learned about record center in chapter 2. Let's recap back. Record Center is a building designed or adapted for low cost storage, uh, maintain or communication of semi current uh, pen records pending to their ultimate disposal. Okay, can you take this one? Okay, this is what uh, I, uh, the boxes, okay, the storage boxes. And you can see the white one, this is what we call the labeling for each box. Okay, so this is what we call the uh, steel shelf. Okay, so that's why you need to use this document. Uh, this equipment, oh sorry, this equipment to get uh, the document, the boxes there, okay? And last but not least, you have the type of record center. There are only three. The first one is you have national record center. The second one is you have departmental record center. And lastly, you have a commercial record center or in other words, we call it as a profit private company, okay? And the record center control procedure. So, for this one, uh, record center control file, you have uh, four. The first one is inactive records index, the charge out and follow out file, the destruction date file, and last, la lastly is destruction file. Okay, let's take a look one by one. So, the record center control file, you have four. The first one is inactive records index. Okay. For this one is an index of all records in the inactive storage center. And charge out follow up file, you have learned this one before. So it's a tickler file uh, that contain form filed by dates that records are due back in inactive record center. Next one is disruption date file is a tickler file containing copies of transmitter forms completed when records are received in record center and lastly is destruction file is a file containing co containing copies of transmitter forms removed from the destruction date file after the records are destroyed so the forms are filed by department names and destruction dates okay so these are what we call the record center control file okay 
So that's uh, all for chapter 6 and we have completed uh, our syllabus for this OBM 247 and thank you so much and if you have any inquiries uh, just do private message me. Okay, thank you so much and Assalamualaikum.